A massive patch of ocean floor off California has over 5,000 near-perfect holes carved deep into the sea floor, and no one knows who made them. Two miles under the Gulf of Alaska, scientists pulled up a smooth golden orb that looked like an alien egg, and even after studying it, scientists still don't know what it is. And in the middle of the Pacific, sailors have seen a mysterious white flash called Tilapa, a streak of light that somehow points straight toward distant islands, with no explanation of how or why it exists. This is disturbing sea phenomena scientists still can't explain. Off the coast of central California, there's a stretch of seafloor that's full of these mysterious holes. It's called the Sir Pockmark Field, about 500 square miles of strange, perfectly round craters. For years, scientists figured these holes, which are about 16 feet deep and up to 600 feet wide, were made by methane bubbles leaking up through the mud. That theory fell apart when researchers from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, Stanford, and the United States Geological Survey Survey sent underwater robots to actually check it out. There were over 5,200 craters, and each one was almost perfectly spaced apart. It was like someone had used a ruler to place them. Even stranger, when they dug into the seafloor, there was no trace of methane anywhere. What they found were layers of mud interrupted by sheets of sand, the kind that forms after huge underwater landslides called sediment gravity flows. Basically, something massive must have ripped through this area thousands of years ago, digging out the holes and then leaving sand and mud behind. The tops of the holes got covered again, but the round shapes stayed, which is why you can still see them today. But according to scientist Eve Lunston, we were unable to determine exactly how these pockmarks were initially formed. So why the holes formed is still a mystery, but at least they've figured out why the holes are still visible. In August of 2023, a team aboard the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration ship Okeanos Explorer came across a mysterious golden dome stuck to a rock two miles under the Gulf of Alaska. Alaska. One of the videographers on the dive first called it a yellow hat, but as the camera zoomed in, it looked more like an egg, a perfect little sphere about four inches wide, with a smaller tear near the bottom showing the same golden color inside. The crew had no idea what they were looking at. Some guessed it was a, quote, dead sponge attachment. Others thought coral, maybe an egg casing. Nobody could say for sure. They collected it using a suction tool on their underwater robot. And when the video went public, it blew up online. The news started calling it the golden orb. NOAA's Sam Candio said they know it's, quote, biological in origin, but that's about it. There's this strange light in the Pacific Ocean that Polynesian navigators have known about for hundreds and hundreds of years. They call it tilapa. It's described as a white flash or streak that shoots through the water, sometimes just under the surface, and somehow experienced sailors could follow it to find islands that were far beyond the horizon. Some people have called it underwater lightning, others simply call it the flashing. But to this day, no one really knows what this light is. The first person to really bring Tilapa to wider attention was David Lewis, who wrote a book called We the Navigators in 1972. He worked with traditional Polynesian sailors from remote islands who said Tilapa could be seen up to 100 miles from land and always pointed in the direction of an island. Lewis described it as streaking, flickering, and darting, but never jagged like lightning. Later, a scientist named Marianne George, who studied tilapa alongside David Lewis, saw it for herself. She ruled out everything from glowing plankton to auroras to light reflections, basically every logical explanation. Back in the 1990s, NOAA's underwater microphone started picking up sounds that nobody could identify. Not whales, not ships, not earthquakes. These hydrophones were originally set up to track submarines during the Cold War, but once scientists started using them for ocean research, they started catching all sorts of strange noises. One of the most famous of these mysterious sounds is what's been called the upsweep. It's this repeating pattern of long, rising tones like a siren slowly winding up. It was first recorded in 1991 across the Pacific. It's not constant, but shows up strongest in spring and fall. NOAA still doesn't know exactly where it's coming from. <laughs> And there's Julia, recorded in 1999. It's this eerie moan that lasted about 15 seconds. The sound was so powerful it was picked up by sensors thousands of miles apart. For years, people thought it might be a massive sea creature, but a lot of scientists now think it could have been an iceberg scraping against the seafloor. Still though, no one can prove it for sure.
And then there's also the bloop. Recorded in 1997, it was loud enough to be detected by multiple hydrophones over 5,000 kilometers apart. This one had an organic quality about it that freaked a lot of researchers out. Today, most agree it probably came from ice quakes, the sound of huge chunks of glaciers breaking apart underwater, but again, no one can be 100% certain. Rogue waves are one of those things sailors used to talk about that no one really believed until they started getting caught on camera. These aren't tsunamis or regular storm waves. They're single, massive walls of water that just come out of nowhere. They can reach over 80 feet high, sometimes doubling the size of any other wave around them. Ships have reported getting hit by waves so tall they crushed steel doors, snapped antennas, ripped entire bridges off tankers. For a long time, scientists thought these stories were exaggerated. Until 1995, when the Dropner oil platform in the North Sea recorded a rogue wave 84 feet tall on New Year's Day. What makes them so disturbing is that no one fully understands how they form. One theory is what's called nonlinear wave interference, where smaller waves suddenly sync up and kind of combine their energy into one massive wave. Kind of like you know, in Power Rangers. All the Zords come together to form the Megazord. Anyway, when this happens, ocean currents and wind can make it even worse, focusing all that power in one place. But even with today's technology, we still can't predict when one will happen. They seem to just appear, and when they do, it's too late to avoid them. The odds of one forming should be almost zero based on normal wave statistics, yet they keep showing up. Cargo ships, cruise liners, and research vessels have been hit by these things. Scientists just found something strange happening in one of the most important ocean systems on Earth. And they figured it out by studying clamshells. A team led by Beatriz Arellano Nava from the University of Exeter analyzed layers inside two species of North Atlantic clams, which basically record ocean conditions year by year, almost like tree rings. They found that the North Atlantic subpolar gyre, which is a massive swirl of ocean currents south of Greenland, has been acting weird for decades. It might be getting close to a breaking point. This swirl is part of a bigger system that moves warmer water up toward Europe, which is why the continent's winters are much milder than other places at the same latitude. But the clam data shows it's been acting weird since the 50s. According to Nava, the subpolar gyre was recently acknowledged as a tipping element, end quote. That means if it weakens too much, it could trigger, quote, more extreme weather events, particularly in Europe, and also changes in global precipitation patterns. The last time this system collapsed was during the 13th and 14th centuries, right before the Little Ice Age when average temperatures dropped several degrees and rivers across Europe just froze solid. Scientists don't think that exact scenario will repeat, but it's still unsettling that the same kind of instability is showing up again. Next up, we have the strange phenomena of the Milky Sea. Sailors have talked about this phenomena for centuries. Higher stretches of the ocean glowing white, like someone just dumped a giant bucket of milk into the water. In 2006, a satellite image actually captured one south of Java that stretched for more than 9,000 square miles. Crews on passing ships described sailing through glowing water for hours, completely surrounded by light with no clear source. Scientists think it could be caused by bioluminescent bacteria that glow to attract fish and other sea life, but for reasons no one can fully understand, they sometimes all gather together across massive patches of ocean, all lighting up at once. And this can last for days, even weeks. So off the coast of Oregon, scientists came across something that they really weren't looking for. A strange underwater spring that seems to be leaking from deep inside one of the most dangerous earthquake zones on Earth. It's called Pythia's Oasis. Researchers from the University of Washington found it about 50 miles off Newport, Oregon, completely by accident. They're out on a research ship when their sonar picked up unexpected plumes rising from the seafloor. When they sent down a robot to check it out, they saw warm fluid shooting out of the ocean floor like a fire hose. Oceanographer Evan Solomon said he'd never seen anything like it before and that, to his knowledge, no other scientist has either. The liquid was about 9 degrees Celsius or 16 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than the surrounding water. Now, that might not sound like a whole lot, but it actually means it's coming from deep underground, around two and a half miles down, right in the area where the Pacific Northeast's tectonic plates 
meet. The same spot that could one day unleash a massive earthquake. See, that liquid acts like a kind of lubricant between the tectonic plates. Solomon compared it to an air hockey table. When pressure is high, the plates can slip easily, but when fluid leaks out, friction starts to build up. There's a weird spot in the Indian Ocean where gravity is weaker than anywhere else on Earth. It's called the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or sometimes just the gravity hole. It sits southwest of Sri Lanka, and if you could remove the ocean's tides and currents, the sea surface there would actually dip about 106 meters, that's over 300 feet, lower than normal. It was first found in 1948 by a Dutch scientist named Felix Andres Venning Menes, who was measuring gravity from a ship. Decades later, scientists still aren't totally sure what's causing it. A 2023 study used computer models and earthquake data found that when India split off from Africa millions of years ago, pieces of old ocean crust sank deep into the earth, while lighter, hotter rock rose up underneath. And that mix of heavy and light material could make gravity weaker in that area, but not everyone is convinced. Some scientists point out that this doesn't explain other weird gravity spots near Africa. So for now, this massive dip in Earth's gravity field is still one of the planet's biggest unsolved mysteries. And finally, in 2011, a Swedish dive team called Ocean X picked up something strange on sonar while searching for shipwrecks in the Baltic Sea, a perfectly circular object, about 200 feet wide, sitting 300 feet below the surface. The sonar showed clean geometric lines and what looked like almost a stair-type formation leading up one side. Team member Peter Lindbergh said the shape had straight edges and right angles, and that it didn't look like any natural rock he'd seen before. When they returned with an underwater robot, they said the surrounding seafloor even looked like a, quote, runway leading up to the object. Samples they collected were sent to scientists, and while most said they appeared to be natural rock, others did admit that something about this thing didn't add up. Marine archaeologist Goran Ekberg said, a Natural geological formation can't be ruled out, but I agree the finding looks weird since it's completely circular. And Martin Jacobson, a marine geologist from Stockholm University, said he'd need, quote, more material before making an official statement. So, sure, it could just be an oddly shaped rock formation, but nobody's officially proven what the Baltic Sea anomaly really is. All that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.